Hi everybody, I'd like to welcome you to another audio programming for beginners tutorial. And today's a very exciting day because we're going to actually go into a programming language today and learn some stuff. And today we're going to build a very basic sine wave oscillator. Okay, so this is just going to kind of follow on from the knowledge that we've built up with the, with the previous tutorials and using that knowledge to actually start building some things. Okay, now the language that I've chosen to build this uh, oscillator in is Max MSP. Max MSP does cost money, but there's a free solution that's online. It's a free open source solution called Pure Data. And I think for this tutorial, you'll be able to pretty much follow along uh, the same way that I've been that I'm going to do with with Max, and you should be fine. Some of you may be familiar with the term Max for Live, and those are devices that and plugins that are built specifically for uh, Ableton and for for use in Ableton. And if you actually have the Ableton suite, you can actually go into the Max for Live devices, and you can actually see the code and the way that these plugins were written. And uh, some of these guys are just so amazing. And Ableton has recently bought Max, and I'm sure there's going to be some really amazing changes to come. But you can pretty much build anything within Max. It's a great prototyping language. It's a little bit different than languages like C++ and JavaScript in that um, this is a visual programming language in which you call up objects, and then you're able to use kind of uh, imaginary wires to connect those objects so you can see how everything is rooted together. Uh, and this is different from C++ and JavaScript in that those are procedural object-oriented programming languages in which it's just words and you just have to kind of imagine in your mind how those things are connecting. So I would, uh, I would think that this would be a good way for us to kind of in introduce some basic programming concepts which I'm going to kind of sprinkle in along with this tutorial, just to kind of familiarize with, uh, fam familiarize you with terms like the difference between a float and an integer and um, good programming habits like initia initializing uh, your values um, and things like this. So this that's the reason why I chose to go with Max. So let's go ahead and get started. And, oh, I'm still on my quick time player. Okay, now I'm in Max. So we're just going to open up a new patcher, okay, just like this. And maybe I'll come back at a point and we can um, go a little bit more into Max and about some of the um, some of the kind of basics of it. But I'm just going to leave this to more to kind of showing you the oscillator and just the kind of concepts behind building the oscillator. You can take these, these kind of concepts and the basic way that this is built and you can port this to any programming language and the things that you need to get going are pretty much the same okay so the first thing we're going to start off with I, I press n to create a new object okay and i'm going to create what's called a cycle object now a cycle object is just what it says right here is a sinusoidal oscillator okay so the last uh last lesson we talked about the sine wave and how it can basically oscillate at different values at a different at different frequencies. So this is just an object that generates the that generates a sine wave for us. And what we can do is we can just give it an initial value. Now it's good when you're creating these objects to give it an initial value, or else uh, this you know your your different kind of programming elements will be out there, and you you won't have any idea you know what value that might be generating okay so it's good to just kind of give it an initial value to start off with and then you can go back and you can change it later okay and we're going to give it an initial value of 440 hertz okay so that means uh if you know we're we're in a uh we're in a digital domain okay and so every 44,100 if our sampling rate is 44,100 um times a second then your uh sign sign oscillator is going 440 times in that one second okay so i've just created that object okay now what i can do is i can create uh a number here like if i wanted to change this number okay i can create 
a, uh, a, a, a number box here. So if I just create, if I just press F, that just creates the, um, the number here. So if I wanted to change that number. Now what I can do is I can take this, uh, this node here, and if I press and I hold the mouse, and that I can connect it to my oscillator, okay? So now, if I if I go and I change this, that would change what what this uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't actually show the change, but um, it would actually change the frequency that's happening there. Okay, so we have a sign so we have a sine oscillator. Now, if we just picture from our last tutorials, and in the digital domain, what this would be doing is it, it would be producing values. 44,100 times a second between minus one and one, as we've discussed before. Um, I wish I could print out those values uh, onto the console here just for you to see, but um, I couldn't find a way to actually print out what the values were that were coming out of um, this sine wave. So I hope you could just take my word for it. Um, so now uh, if we go and we could just make a volume, we could just make a volume uh, uh, slider for this. Uh, so if I just hit N to create a new object, and then the object I'm one is called gain. And this is just a volume, a volume slider. Okay. Now, if I press N again to create another new object, okay. And this one I'm going to call easy DAC. Now, DAC is digital audio to audio converter. Okay, we talked about that in our past tutorials, uh, so you should know what that is now. Okay, and this, what this does is this actually converts the values between, so we're receiving values from our sine oscillator between minus one and one. Okay, it's going through this volume control, and then what's happening with the digital audio converter is that it's actually, um, it's actually converting that to numbers that are showing that are showing our speaker exactly where it needs to be at these various points and times which which, which uh, produces the sign noise that we're going to hear out the speaker okay if you have any questions or anything about this or that there's a part that's kind of unclear then um, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer okay so I'm just going to turn the volume down so we don't blow out our ears and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to once again connect this to the gain. Okay, keep our wires nice and neat. And then what I did was I, I just took the, um, the node from the left-hand side there of the, of the gain slider. And I've connected it to what is the left and right outputs of our speakers. Okay, so if we turn this up, we should hear. Okay, so now we're hearing a a uh, sine wave at 440 hertz okay now if I change this number okay now it's the frequency that you see there up at the top okay so I've just put it back at 440 hertz again okay that's cool all right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a a trigger to turn this signal on and off okay so I'm just going to disconnect this wire for a second so it turns our sound off and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press T which is a shortcut for toggle okay so this is what's called a toggle and then if I just click the mouse in here it just turns turns it on and off okay now what I want you to think of very early on with this, uh, with this, I want you. To, I'm, I'm trying to get you into a uh, programming kind of state of mind. Okay, when, when the, when this is off, okay, this is basically like saying zero, okay, and when it's on, it's like saying one, okay, the number one, okay, the number one off is zero, okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply these two objects together okay so if you just kind of imagine with me okay we have a sine wave that's we have a sine wave that's generating values between minus one and one it's happening at, at 
44,100 times a second, okay? Now, if I multiply that by an object, if I multiply that, those values by a number that's zero, no matter what that number of, that's happening in the sine wave is gonna be, it's always gonna be zero, okay? So what's gonna come out of the speaker? Nothing, okay? That's why this is on and off, okay? Whereas if I'm multiplying all these values by the number one, then what's happening is that's what's going to let our, our, uh, our sine wave values go through, which are gonna give the instructions to our speaker to move back and forth creating the sine wave, okay? So I'm just gonna press N again to create another object. And now I'm gonna use what's called a multiply object because I'm gonna multiply these values together, okay? So I'm doing times, okay? Now this is a signal that I'm multiplying, okay? And that's, we know is a signal by this little tilde um, here, okay? Which means that it's numbers that are moving at an audio rate, okay? So if I just do this multiply two signals, okay? And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this cycle into the, the cycle object into the left hand side, okay? And then I'm gonna put this toggle into the right hand side. So I'm multiplying these two numbers, okay? These are, if I just comment here, values. So if I just say generates values, I'll be a big here, between minus one and one, okay? 44,100 times a second. Okay, so that's just my comment, just commenting here, just so. So, and then I'm gonna comment here, a value of zero or one, off, on. Okay, uh, there we go. I'm just gonna put that here. So now we've got our multiply We've got, our, we've got our multiplication happening. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that, we're just gonna patch that into our, our gain, okay? Which is like our volume, our volume knob, okay? Now, if I hit this toggle, should turn on, okay? So there, there we go. So that's how we turn that signal on and off, okay? So that's cool. Okay, now let's just let's just give a uh, let's just pull up like a quick uh, scope oscilloscope just to show us roughly what our what our signal uh, looks like. Okay, so if I just hit N again, and then I'm gonna call up an object called scope. Okay, visualize an audio signal. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull that in from. Our multiplication object here. Okay, now let's see what happens. Okay, so now we have this um, we have this sine wave that's is going between minus one and one. It, it looks like it's it looks like it's actually clipping. I don't think that it's actually clipping. It might be just the refresh rate, which is the reason why uh, we're seeing the values kind of kind of getting walled off there at the very top and the very bottom. Okay, um, so if I just turn that back off. Okay, now let's just pull up something so we can look roughly at the frequency that we're that we're working at. Okay, so if I I think it's spec, spec spectroscope. Okay, so if I go here and I connect, if I connect that. Okay, if you hit Command A and then you hit Route Patch Chords, it makes all of our patch all of our chords look really nice, which is cool, okay? So let me hit it again, okay? And so, as I said before, um, the sine wave has one, is the only wave that has one single fundamental frequency, okay? So that's the reason why you just see one peak at what, uh, unfortunately I can't uh, show what the numbers are here. This is going between zero and uh, 22,000 hertz but it'd be nice if I could see the actual numbers here. But um, 
this is 400 this is 440 hertz here and if i move it up if i move it up the uh spectrum you can see the you can see the actual wave the actual fundamental frequency moving up and down the wave okay so um one thing that i'll show you one thing that i'll show you quickly is that we can also just change there are different types of waves here that we could put in okay i could put in a saw wave and then you'll see that as we discussed last tutorial that there are harmonics uh so it's not just a single fundamental frequency there are actual there are actual harmonics which generate that um that wave that we're going to hear okay and that's that's what we see there okay is that we see um a whole bunch of saws so to speak that are um that are oscillating at, so it's a bunch of sine frequencies at these different sine waves at these different frequencies that are being um, that are being added up that are creating that um, that sound of a of a saw wave. Okay, you could also do rect. I believe it's rect. I hope it's rect. Yeah, this is a square wave. Okay same sort of thing okay so those are different sine waves that are being added up harmonically to create that sound of a square wave okay so this is where we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just change this back to sine real quick and what I'll do is I'll just make this uh, I'll, I'll, uh, it's not sine cycle um, I'll actually just save this and uh, make this an available download if you have Max. Okay, and um, this is where we're going to end things. And then for the next one, we're going to talk a little bit more about the saw wave, um, rectangle wave, and then we're going to start getting into frequency modulation and amplitude modulation, which are two different ways that we can start generating some different and more interesting waveforms than just a sine wave. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Any questions, just uh, drop me a comment or a message, and I'll see you soon.